Hey friends, in today's video, I have some really easy, cheap Dollar Tree farmhouse tier tray DIYs for you. So if that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. To start off, I take these little mini picture frames from Dollar Tree, and originally I was going to do something different with these, but you ever get into a project and you have something in mind for one thing and then it just turns into something completely different? Yeah, well that's exactly what happened here. So I take them out of the package, I take the backing off of it, as well as the glass piece and then the fake picture. I also pull off those little tabs that are holding the back of the frame in and then I take these skewers from Dollar Tree I measure a cross piece cut it and then originally I had cut eight of them to do X's on all of them but you're only going to need two pieces so once I had the first one glued in with some hot glue on a diagonal then I hold it up to the other one make a mark and then I cut it and glue those two pieces down as well next I take my chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree and I just give those skewers a good coat of that paint as usual I'm just gonna put a disclaimer my girls are right in the living room a room away so if you hear them that's why I have my eye on them but I am still in the other room I'm a stay-at-home mom sorry not sorry it just is what it is and you guys say that you enjoy hearing them anyway so let's move on I take a piece of scrap chicken wire from Dollar Tree and I measure it to the back of the frame and then I staple that down and I lost the clip but I did distress it with some white Waverly chalk paint all the way around the frame and then I added a few pieces of greenery in the shape of a wreath I love this little accent decor piece for a tiered tray or a small shelf. It's so fun taking everyday items and just turning them into something that you wouldn't normally see. Hey friends, so I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people to explore new skills, deepen passions you may already have, and get lost in creativity. Right now I'm currently taking a few courses like watercoloring and hand lettering essentials for beginners. A lot of you guys have reached out to me lately and asked me about how to start a YouTube channel and things like that. So I have personally really been enjoying this class, YouTube Success Script Shoot and Edit with Marquez Brownlee. The classes are really short and to the point, but you feel like you are right in front of the instructor. They're very short classes and they're very easy to follow and I just think that this would be an amazing resource for some of you out there. But this is not the only class they have. They have tons of amazing genres and niches, so definitely check this out. So Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. There are no ads and they're consistently adding new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. Plus, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, and I thought that you guys might want to know that if you click the link in my description box, if you click the title of the video, a box will appear, that is the description box. The first thousand people to click that link will get a free premium trial. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Moving on to our next little project. This one is super simple, you guys. I had gotten this little uh, lantern. I did not get it from Dollar Tree. It is from Dollar Tree, but my Dollar Trees did not get this nautical line. So I did go on the Dollar Tree D-Stash group on Facebook, and I bought them from a lady there. So all I did was just use my little mini chip brush. I distressed all of the edges. I then just cut a little piece of greenery in half, glued it to the top of the lantern. I then made a simple buffalo check bow, glued that to the top as well, and then that was it. You guys, this was so simple. It probably took me about five minutes to uh, do this over, and I just love the way that this turned out. So I know you'll let me know in the comments down below what you think. 
So if you're new to my channel or just have not hit that subscribe button yet, my name's Melissa. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. So I would love if you would become part of the family. You just wanna click that red subscribe button and then tap the bell and all, that way you're notified every single time I upload, or I should say, you should be notified every single time I upload. Also, check and make sure that YouTube did not unsubscribe you. I have been getting messages that YouTube is unsubscribing my people, so you definitely just wanna check and make sure that you're still subscribed. So on my channel each week, I show you guys my earrings of the week. I thought that it would just be a fun little thing that we do on my channel because I only get to wear earrings for you guys. So I've had these earrings forever. These were one of the first pairs that I had bought when I started to get obsessed with earrings. They're gold. They're actually pretty lightweight. They look heavy, but they're really not. And I do believe I got them at Kmart like five years ago when Kmart was actually a thing. Um, so with all that being said, I know that was long-winded, but let's jump back into today's DIYs. For the next project, you're going to need a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree. And a while back, I had ordered these little mini cutting boards off of Etsy. I do believe it's called Grain and Lace, so if you want to go search, you can. But I will try to leave a free printable for you to print off and then trace this on your foam board. So all I did was just take these little mini cutting boards I laid them out on my foam board and then trace them I then took my hot knife and I do have one of these linked in my Amazon store in the description box but I just very slowly cut this out now you don't need to really push very hard you want to let your hot knife do all the work for you and just very easily cut those out the edges will come out perfectly I was very scared of this thing because I had an incident happen with it but I'm so glad that I picked it back up a few weeks back um, with this arch window that I did if you did not catch that video I will leave it in the cards in the right hand corner so once I had them cut out, then I just take my fingernail. I just kind of put some knots in there. I have a few other tools that I just put blemishes in there because with natural wood, they're not perfect. They have blemishes all over the place and it really helps to make your foam board look like real wood if you do the same by just roughing it up. So once I had both of them roughed up, then I take a sponge from Dollar Tree that I had cut in four you want to get that in like the bath section and then I take some antique wax and I push some of the antique wax into those little knots and all the blemishes and then I just give both sides a good coat as well as the sides on both of them next I take another piece of my sponge some ink Waverly chalk paint and some ant not antique wax regular wax it dries clear and you want the wax in with your ink waverly chalk paint because this is going to make it nice and smooth and if you get too much on there you just take a little bit more of the wax and then you can just like swipe it away if that makes sense but I focus on the edges as well as the knots and it looked really pretty without the black and the wax but I wanted mine to be a little bit darker so if you like the look of just the, the antique wax, then leave it as is in the first step. But if you're like me and you like it a little bit darker, then go in with the black. I then just took some white Waverly chalk paint on the end of my sponge. I lightly distressed and then I went back in with the black sponge just to tone that white down a little bit because I did not want, I did not want it too distressed. I then had this transfer from Chalk Couture for a while now. I think I got it back at Christmas time and it's just this really pretty different wreath. I do not believe it's in the chalk shop right now, but they do have other options as far as wreaths. So I will try to leave all the Chalk Couture products that I used in the description box in one link. But I did transfer the wreath onto the round one and then I've had this 
windmill one forever i know for a fact they don't have this one i'm so sorry you guys but i really wanted to use it and i had it so why not but like I said, whatever I can link in the description box, I will. But I transferred the windmill onto the square cutting board. Once I had both of those transferred on, then I take my letters from Chalk Couture as well. And I transfer on the word home on the round one, starting with the H and the O. I meant to start with the H and the E and then work my way into the middle. But sometimes I'm just going, 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 and I don't realize what I'm doing until after the fact. But once I realized it, I did go in with the E and then the M. That way I can make sure that all the letters are nice and even. This is what I love about Chalk Couture. It's liter that literally took me five minutes, whereas on a Cricut, it probably would have taken me about 30 minutes just because you have to design it, then you have to cut it out and weed it and the whole nine. So this is what draws me to Chalk Couture so much is just the ease of it. But anyway, once I had all my um, images transferred on that I wanted, then I go in once again with my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I lightly distress the edges. I then took some jute and I made a simple bow. First, I wrapped a piece of jute around the neck of the round cutting board. I tied it off, cut it, and then I glued my bow down. And if you haven't seen my bow tutorial, I will have that linked in the cards in the right hand corner as well. So for the square one, all I did was just take a piece of jute and tie that to where the hole was at the top. And you guys, look how amazing these are. Can you even tell that they're foam board? Like, I am blown away at this technique. After I did it in my video a few weeks back, I could not wait to do it again. So let me know in the comments down below if you can tell that this is foam board or does it look like real wood. So I would like to thank Trish and Christine for buying me a coffee. If you guys enjoy my work and want to buy me a coffee, just follow the link in the description box below. I will give you a shout out in my next video. You guys don't have to do that. I do appreciate the ones that do, but you can always support your favorite DIYer or YouTuber just by watching or hitting, hitting that subscribe button. Uh, hitting the thumbs up, commenting. There are so many different ways you can help your favorite YouTubers. You don't have to support us monetarily. You can also buy our merch or just watch the commercials through. Like I said, there's just so many different ways you can support us. So I appreciate every single one of you, no matter which way you support me. Moving on to the next project, you guys, I have had these little house card holders forever and the space at the top where you put a card in always bothered me so much. So for this video, I wanted to just fill those holes in. So I just took some wood filler, I filled them in and then once they dried, I sanded that down smooth. So I don't know about you guys, but when I pull my paint out, I want to try to paint everything I can all at the same time. So that way I can work on, you know, the first thing that had dried. And that way I don't have to go through a zillion different paint brushes. So that's what I'm going to do here. I paint the one of the little houses white. I also got these little mini terracotta pots from Dollar Tree as well as the bottom part that the terracotta pot sits in. So I also give those two a coat of white Waverly chalk paint as well as this little beautiful jar that I believe I picked up at Michael's. They have a new line out this year. I think it's like boho farmhouse i'm not exactly too sure what the theme is all i know is that this jar was beautiful so i did pick that up and i knew that i didn't want it pink just because that doesn't go with my decor but if it goes with your decor then just leave it as is and then i also cut down one of those longer planks uh, wooden planks from dollar tree i just cut it in half painted one of them white 
another one of the little houses in mineral as well as the other half of the wood in mineral and I also painted this little tiny jar that I've had in my stash forever that I do believe I also got from Michaels a while back so while all that's drying this was the first thing that had dried first so I take the little terracotta pot and the bottom piece that it sits on and I give those a distressing of antique wax So I then just flip the terracotta pot and I glue the bottom side of it and then the bottom part to the bottom of the terracotta pot if that makes any sense. And I just thought that this would be a really cute riser for you to elevate something on your tiered tray or on a shelf. Anyway, also I did want to mention um, if crafting is your therapy like me, I do have merch and other designs. If you just look underneath the video, there should be a bar with all my designs. You can click one of the pictures. It will take you to my t-shirt website and you can see all the designs that I have. So with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. Like I said, these are really, really super projects. So all I did with this one, after I had it painted white and it dried, I just took my chip brush and some antique wax. And all I really did was dry brush around all those little details just to bring them out so that you could see them more. And then once I had it all dry brushed, I did dry brush around like the neck, even though you're not really gonna see it, but I wanted it all to blend in. If you don't like the dry brushing, or the antiquing then just leave that step out but then I just took some jute and a small bead of hot glue in the back I glued down the jute and then wrapped it around the neck and then I cut the end and glued that down as well and then that was it this just gives a gorgeous little accent on your tear tray or shelf and I love the way that it turned out you could also stick a little bit of greenery in here or leave it as is. The possibilities are endless and it's totally up to you. So let me know in the comments down below if you would leave it as is or if you would add greenery to it. Moving on to the piece of that wooden plank that we painted white, I just once again dry brushed the edges with some antique wax and my chip brush. And then I had this transfer from Chalk Couture that I love it so much, but I knew that the whole thing would not fit on here. So I just wanted to show you that with every transfer, it gives you directions on the back of how to use it, how to take care of it so that you can get as many uses out of it as you like. I get a lot of questions yes these are reusable you can use them up to 12 times but honestly you guys as long as you take care of them I've gotten some like 50 uses out of these so it just depends how much you take care of that or how well you take care of them I should say but I knew that the whole thing wouldn't fit so all I did was just pull it from the backer I laid the piece down right where that little cow is and then I transferred that on and that was it for that one for the next piece of wood that we painted in that mineral color, I did the exact same thing except I used some white Waverly chalk paint to distress and then I used my quick dry tool to make sure that that was really dry before I went ahead and transferred on one of these house patterns with my white chalk paste. Once I had that transferred on, I slowly pulled the transfer off of it. Anytime you're chalking, you definitely want to pull your transfer back slowly. That way it doesn't smudge. And then once it was dry, I took a large popsicle stick. I held it up to the to the top I was about to say the side I held it up to the top because I knew that I wanted to make little roof pieces and I marked where I needed to cut where two of the pieces would meet in the middle nicely and then once I had the first one cut then I held it up to another one marked it and cut that one as well and then once I had that done then I laid both of them out marked where I needed them to like stop I guess you can say 
I then just cut them down and then used my faux stain. All I did was mix some antique wax, some black paint, and some water to make like a faux stain. And then I just stained those little roof pieces so that it would go together with all the other little decor really nicely. Once I did that, then all I did was glue the roof pieces to the top. Moving on to those little house pieces, all I did was take these little pieces from the house pattern transfer. I cut those out and then I did the little door on one of them and then for the other one I just transferred on a little heart and like I said all of these came in the house pattern transfer which again I will try to link in the description box below but for the little door piece I did do that one with my black chalk paste gosh you guys I can't find my words today but that's really nothing new is it <laughs> and then for the one that we painted in the mineral I chalked on the heart with some white chalk paste once I had them transferred on then for the white house I dry brushed some antique wax and once again surprise surprise for the mineral color I dry brushed on some white Waverly chalk paint and I just love these little houses you guys they just add such character to my tear tray and to my little shelf if you guys have not seen my shelf video I will link that in the cards above This is another super, super simple one. Once the paint was dry, all I did was go in with my mini finger sander, which is also linked in my Amazon store in the description box. I just sand very random spots, especially on the words, and then I go in with that same brush that I just used to dry brush um, with the antique wax, and then that was it for this one. Literally probably would have taken about two minutes if you use something to dry it with, and it just gives it that farmhouse feel that I love so much. For the next project, I took one of these little frames from, or little decor frames from Dollar Tree. I've had this in my stash a while. I actually did something with this like two years ago around fall time. Um, but all I did was just take out that image. I never glued it in. And I took some of this scrapbook paper that I believe I got at Michael's. It's like a farmhouse um, scrapbook paper book <laughs> and I just measured out the inside of my little frame and then I cut that down with my paper cutter. I then took this little mini transfer from Chalk Couture once again and I kind of wanted to show you that you can chalk on so many different surfaces as long as you have a nice thick quality cardstock you can transfer on cardstock and so many other surfaces. So I just lay my transfer down I chalk over it with my ink or my yeah my ink where really chalk paint I chalk over it with my black chalk paste and then I slowly pull that back once again so I then go in with my disappearing purple glue stick just right in the middle of this little frame I wasn't too worried about the edges because as long as the middle is glued down then the edges should be fine and then all I did was go in with my white Waverly chalk paint and my chip brush once again I dry brush the edges and then I make a simple double jute bow I cut off the tails and then I just glue that to the corner of our little decor piece and I love how cute this is you guys I have mentioned on my channel before that I love minis so so much and I love little mini signs as well so for our last but certainly not least project, I take my jute and on the end I put some painter's tape so that it's much easier to string our beads and then I string 26 14 millimeter beads. Once I had those strung on my jute, then all I did was just tie a knot on each side. 
I then had these tags, I believe from Hobby Lobby. I got them a while back and I took the tag off of that and then once again went in with my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and dry brushed on the front and the back. I then took this calendar that I could not figure out what else to use it for so I thought that this would be perfect. I actually used one of these in my little shelf video that I made. I can link that in the cards in the right hand corner if any of you are new and have not seen that. But on the back where it shows you the pictures of each month, I just cut out that little market one with the barn on it. I glued that down to my little tag and then once I had that glued down with my disappearing purple glue stick then I had these scrap galvanized hearts from signs that I have taken apart from Dollar Tree and I always save things like that because you never know what you can do with it and just like the little project I did in my shelf video I just cut these down and the pieces that I had for that video were already cut but for this one I just cut them down to kind of be like a strip and then I folded one side over the tag and then I lifted that off I put a bead of hot glue and then I put it back down and then I also did the same thing to the other side I kind of just pushed it to the back because this is metal it kind of formed to the sides really nicely and then I just repeated that step at the bottom before I did the pop before I did the bottom I did go in with my finger sander and just sand those edges just to make this look old and weathered and then I went ahead and glued down the bottom galvanized piece. I went in with my antique wax on the galvanized metal just to make it look like rust and then I dry brushed what was ever what was left on my brush all on this little tag to make it look old and weathered. I then just tied this to the end of my little garland and then once I had it double knotted I just clipped that excess off and now I'm going to show you how to make a tassel for the end. So I had this white jute from Walmart and I've had it a while. Um, this is another thing that I don't normally use and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. So all I did was take the end of the white jute and the end of the regular jute and I just wrapped it around my hand 10 times. I then cut another piece of the white jute and before I cut them apart I did string it through like the loop and tie it at the top and then I cut it down so that the bottom of the tassel, the bottom of the tassels are open and then I took another piece of the brown jute and I tied it around kind of like towards the top and then I wrapped one of the pieces around just to make it look more fuller and that you couldn't really see where I had knotted it and then last but not least I cut I trimmed down the edges to size and I tied that onto the other end of our little garland. I hope that made sense. I know that I tripped over a lot of my words. I normally do that. I like to show you guys I'm real. Um, I don't have time to edit out every single time that I trip up over a word, which is just real life when you can't talk. I can never talk. So anyway, I love the way that this garland turned out. It's different. It looks amazing on my shelf and on my tiered tray. So let me know in the comments down below which mini decor is your favorite. I love how all of this turned out. Sometimes I'm really bad at decorating tiered trays. So when I got this put together and it looked really cute, I was so excited and I could not wait to show you guys. So if you haven't hit that thumbs up button, please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. Share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it too. Because those thumbs up and those shares really help my channel to grow help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Also, like I said, leave in the comments which which was your favorite. That also helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. And 
obviously subscribe if you haven't already. You might as well just click that subscribe button if you have made it this far. Please give me a heart in the comments down below if you're still here. You guys are the real OGs. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning and special. You are gorgeous and I love you with all my heart and soul. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.